Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about um, the file. So we're just going to—I'm going to introduce a lot of the concepts that we'll discuss more uh, in other videos. Um, so just a brief overview of what a file is. So the goals: we want to define what a file is. Um, we want to see what kind of operations can we actually do on files. Uh, what is a What's a file type? What do we mean by file type? Um, what's the structure of a file? And how files are internally stored? And again, this is just a brief overview for this video, and we'll go into more depth um, in, pre in future videos. So files. Um, so you are all used to working with files, um, text files, source files, executable files. Um, they're a logical storage unit that's mapped by the OS into physical devices. So, right, we're all used to files. So files have lots of attributes um, that we need to keep track of. Um, so we have, for instance, we have name, which, okay, so this is the name of the file. So this is just a file um, manager in uh, Mac and what it brings up for all of the attributes. These are just a subset of the ones that you can define. So we have like a name, we have a date that may be a modified date, uh, a creation date. So we also have creation, when created. Um, what else is important? It's important to know what kind of, it, of file this is. So OS knows how to um, work with certain types of files. Um, so we need to keep track of what type. We also need to keep track of the privileges so um, who has access to what um, or who has access to this file and there's also this more information this is a picture so um, it's going to tell you what color space and profile it was used and its dimensions which is also um, so more metadata so all of this needs to be keep um, kept track somewhere um, in the OS because for each of the files, it the OS needs to know a little bit more about it before it starts to actually do any kind of operation on it. Ooh, one more thing. Size, very important, especially for when we need to decide where to store this. Um, and if this file grows, how do we need to move it around somewhere in disk maybe to make it so that it fits in the spot that it's in. Um, so all these are really important, and later on we'll introduce the, the file control block, which will keep track of a lot of this metadata. So file operations, so you have some basic file operations that need to be available on all OSs. So you need to be able to create files, open files, write to files, read to files, reposition within a file, so change your location where you're reading maybe in a file, um, so random access. Um, or it could be sequential access, it doesn't have to be random access. Um, deleting a file and truncating a file. Um, so either, so instead of deleting, truncation is where um, we want to keep the file, but delete contents. So these are the seven basic ones. Um, Anything more complicated, like for instance a copy, so you also want to be able to copy your file from one place to another, it's just a combination between um, these basic operations, right? So copy, um, so it might have some creation in it. Um, so for instance, if we're copying, so say we have the command copy, um, file one to file two and file two doesn't exist so we'd have to create file two um, open file one uh, so write so I guess read read from file one, you could read it into a buffer, um, or uh, we could have opened 
Um, so open file to write um, to file two and then close file one and file two. And then finally, so this copy um, command is usually, if it's doing the copy like this, where it's copying, uh, it doesn't actually uh, delete any either of the files. So you would have two files uh, with the same content. So all of these more advanced um, file operations can be done um, with a combination of these basic ones. We're going to talk a little bit more about the open operation because it's important. So a lot of these basic operations require an opening to the file to be actually open. Um, so creation does not, so we don't need to open, clearly does. Um, writing, that needs to have be open, a file needs to be open. Reading, the file needs to be open. Repositioning, uh, deleting doesn't. Uh, truncating does as well because you want to open the file, delete the contents, and then um, close the file. So open is really important. And um, so it's really important to keep track of which files are open. So if you have a right to the file, the first thing that you need to do is figure out if that file is even open. And if it's not open, um, then you need to go ahead and open it. So here, if before this we had a right to file F, the first thing it would do is first needs to check to see if file F is open. And if it's not, then it might have to open the file. Or more likely it would cause an error. But maybe we have it built in that you know we have a fail safe and if it's not open it will already it will open. And so the way that this is done is that there is a system wide um, open file table. So system wide that has entries and each one of these entries are going to actually be um, a uh, file control block. So we talked about control blocks for processes and for threads um, and for resources. So this is the file equivalent of that. So every file that's open is going to have an entry in this system-wide um, open file table. And so every time um, this write command, uh, write or any kind of command that is being done on files that need to be open is called, then it's first going to come here and it's going to check to see if it's open already. And if it's not, it does something, and if it is, then fine, it can go ahead and write. One question you could ask is, what if two processes, um, so here I just had one process that was opening the file and reading from it, or writing to it. What if multiple processes have um, the file open? So now, I mean, a couple things you can do. So um, you could, um, well, so let me back up so this becomes a little bit more clear. So now when it's open um, and it, we just have this one open file table, if we want, to, if this code closes the file um, or even deletes the file, well, let's just say closes, so close F, then this entry is taken out and the file is closed. So now if we have two processes that are dealing with the same file, if at some point this one decides to close the file before this one does, so this one still needs it, process one still needs it, but P2 has closed it, and that system-wide table now that had F in it as open, sees this call and closes it. So now we're in trouble um, so because this process still needs it, and but now it's closed. So um, instead of doing the single level uh, open file table, what is done is there's a, a two level open file table where each one of the processes, um, let me change my color. Each one of the processes themselves have an open file table. There's still the system-wide open um, 
process table, but it has a little bit more information stored. Open, sorry, open file. I said open process. So open file table. So this is system wide. And these are per process. So the per process tables will also have F and they will actually point to uh, this table, uh, the system-wide table, and the system-wide table furthermore will keep track of how many processes um, are current, have currently that file open. So now when P2 calls close, it can go and say, okay, so I, I know, I go to my system-wide table, I will change this from two to one, so I'll decrement it, and then I can get rid of this entry in my open um, file table, because I no longer have it open, but it will remain in the system-wide table. Um, so also for file operations, you can lock, there's locks available for you to lock the file. So for instance, in this last situation, we had two processes that had both had the file open at the same time. So in some instances, you might not want this to be, um, so for locks, you can have a shared lock where multiple processes can acquire the lock at one time, or you can have exclusive locks, which is more common. Um, so these exclusive locks, they fall into two different categories. There's mandatory and advisory. So mandatory, uh, so Windows uses mandatory. And what this is, is when one process acquires the lock, it's that's the only process that can have the lock. No other um, locks can acquire it. So if they come and try to acquire it, then um, they get sent away. In advisory, which um, Unix definitely does, and I'm not sure about um, Linux. So I'll put Unix here. Uh, does this advisory uh, way of doing exclusive locks. So what this says is that if a process comes and locks a file, so it grabs a file, it issues an advisory lock. And so when the next process comes in and wants that same file, um, it is told that another file has it, another process has that file, and then it's up to the OS, or not uh, not up to the OS, but up to the actual um, process to facilitate that, to talk to the other process um, about when it's going to be done and when it can actually have um, the file. So the mandatory um, OS is in charge. And in advisory, the um, processes have to coordinate. And why even have this? Why, um, why not just make it you know, mandatory all the time? Or why not just make it advisory all the time? So the mandatory, the real drawback of the mandatory locks is that um, it, it can cause deadlock. It can cause... Um, starvation so if if you are not doing it properly if a file if a process grabs a file in the mandatory lock and locks it and it never gives it up then anybody else that comes in to grab that file is always going to be blocked um, so it causes it could cause a lot of idle time and so even if it's done properly it can still cause um, a lot of deadlock so that's kind of the basis behind it. Okay, file types. So file types, um, the OS needs to know what type of file it's dealing with because each file type has its own different structure um, internally. So usually what typically what's done, and I know everyone has seen this, is that the file type is actually included in the name. So that dot um, txt or dot c the extension of the file is actually the is telling the OS what type of file it is um, so that it knows what structure to um, anticipate and here's some just some common file types with their extensions so I won't go through all this you guys can pause it and look at it if you want and so these file types, they indicate the file structure. And so the OS needs code so that it can handle each one of these um, structures. 
So this ends up being a lot of code. If we want to program our OS so that it recognizes a ton of different file structures, we're going to need a lot of code to do that. And so instead, what most OSs do is they only really support a few file structures, really the executables. Um, and then, then the question is, so, so how can I open all these files? I have like a thousand different files, and maybe that's a lot, hundreds of different file types um, that I can open on my computer. How can I do that? Um, so the answer is that it pushes off the, the heavy lifting goes ooh, wow, um, to applications. So these applications will have the code that is needed to read these file types and understand them. And all the OS needs to do is understand how to run this application. So all my OS needs to do is understand the executable of the program, of the application, and the application then can read all of the other formats that it can open. Okay. Internal file structure, this is, we're going to go over this um, a lot more in detail later. Um, but some things to note, so sometimes files are stored in contiguous blocks in data stores. So block sizes are always fixed, so this can lead to internal fragmentation. Um, so for instance, if your file is um, 1,949 bytes and your block size is 512 bytes, you're going to need four blocks to fit that, but the fourth block is not going to be filled up all the way. So this will be your file. Um, there'll be a little bit of space extra, and if you do the math, you'll see that 99 bytes are, in fact, um, wasted in this. So there is some internal fragmentation. We'll talk about different strategies of how to actually store file structure. This is just kind of a preview of some things to, um, to note. So please let me know if you have any questions, um, and so we'll continue developing this idea of the file in previous videos, or in, uh, yes, we're going to time travel in future videos.